It's time to defend the den. Hello and welcome to the George C. Bowman Center. I'm your man Dave Molinaro here on AlbrightAthletics.com. Thank you very much for tuning in as the men's basketball lines host Penn State Burks in this home opener matchup of the season. We're going to send it down to the court for the national anthem and then we'll be right back here with starting lineups and some pregame notes. Stick with us. A few P cases graduated, some familiar faces remain, and expectations are just as high as the Lions were named second in the MAC Commonwealth preseason poll. You remember last season, they made an appearance in the conference championship. They also took a trip dancing in the NCAA tournament. This season, Albright will rely on some, some same faces that we've seen in bigger roles. Jared Rappaport and Delacio Dancy, of course, more on them to come, as well as some of the younger guys, Samuel Majeka Dume and Isaiah Harris. Albright opened up their 2018 campaign at Franklin and Marshall College with a 74-81 loss. Sophomore Samuel Majeka Dume opened up with a career-high 23 points on 8 of 14 shooting, while Rappaport added a double-double of 17 points and 13 rebounds. The young guys, Smoot and Lane, added 6 points each as well, coming in off the bench. Two diplomats had 22 points each, and the Lions weren't able to pull out that season opener, but we're back here at home looking to defend the den. The Lions are seeking their first win, as we said, hosting the PSU Burks Nittany Lions, who are 0-2 coming in with losses on the road at both Elizabethtown and at Alvernia. They are led by Latrell Carroll and Matt Seep. As you can hear from the public address announcer, starting lineups are being announced for the Lions. Delacio Dancy, Samuel Majekadume, Sidney Brown, Isaiah Harris, and Jared Rappaport. Penn State Burks on the floor first. Their starters, Latrell Carroll, Edris Hightower, Brandon Wise, Steve Lachansky, and Matt Seep. The Nittany Lions in their Navy uniforms, white numbers, white trim. And the Albright Lions in their home whites, red number, red trim. Lining up for the opening tip is Matt Seep, the senior forward, 6'6", 210 pounds from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Went to Lower Dolphin High School.
Rappaport will be lining up for the Lions. As we said, it's Rappaport, Brown, Harris, Dancy, and Majeka Dume. Both teams looking for their first win early in the 2018 season. We're about to be underway with this tip-off. Sydney Brown to Dancy. From the wing, no good from long range. Offensive rebound, Majeka Dume down low to Rappaport, and that's the first turnover of the game for the Lions. And we have a stoppage of play early on. The ball rack is basically on the court. Come on, guys. The home, uh, the home staff, it's their first game as well. We'll get it cleaned up. It will be Steve Luchansky inbounding to Hightower, who's guarded by Brown. The Lions in a man-to-man -man defense to start off. Harris came over for help. Dancy quick hands guarding the wing. Ball up top, 15 on the shot clock. Swung around. Rappaport working hard down low to keep position on Hightower. And it's stolen by Rappaport. Dancy now with the ball crossing midcourt. Slicing, dicing. Brown in the corner can't handle the hot potato. That's going to be turnover number two for the Lions. Sydney Brown, the sophomore guard from Sicklerville, New Jersey, went to Lins Winslow Township High School. Guarding the ball, Hightower passes it up top. It's Matt Seep, one of the players to watch for Penn State Burks, gives it to Luchansky, sets a high screen. Double team by Majeka Dume. Shot clock down to 10. Lions holding firm. Double team down low, loose ball. Penn State Burks is going to have to put it up quickly. One on the shot clock. Luchansky is going to be the last one caught when the buzzer sounds. Did not have time to get that one up. And the Lions with some lockdown T early in this game. A minute and eight seconds in. It'll be Rappaport to Dancy. Starting off this possession as the crowd continues to roll into the George C. Bowman Center. Harris down low. The spin move. Rappaport gets the first bucket of the game with the easy deuce. Harris and Rappaport, the two big men for the Lions. You will hear that combo all season long, working hard down low. They're going to be the ones setting those low off-the-ball screens for each other, creating space, crashing the boards. And the Lions back on the defensive end. It's Hightower with some fancy dribbling up off the glass. Can't get it to fall. Majeka Dume rips down the board. Gets stripped from behind from Hightower. None of his teammates let him know a defender was trailing him. Majeka Dume got a hand on it. Luchansky misses the gimme, and the Lions get lucky. Looking to go the other way. Majeka Dume crosses up Chansky. Harris came over to set the screen. Majeka Dume gets rid of the ball, but there will be the first foul of the game called on number 20, Steve Luchansky, the freshman guard from Souderton, Pennsylvania. That's going to be his first team's first. Majeka Dume in the corner, 20 on the shot clock. Looks to drive. That one was going to be last off Latrell Carroll, I believe. Yes, the referee agrees. The freshman forward from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dancy underneath his own basket will be the inbounds man. The line's in a box formation. Two on the block, two on the elbow. Rappaport just sets up shop down low and gets the easy deuce. He's got four. Give Dancy the assist on the inbound as well. A number we always love to look at is turnovers. And rebounds, as that one's tipped around, they're going to say it was last off Sidney Brown. The Lions early on controlling the rebounding battle, 3 nothing. The Lions 2 for 3 from the field, shooting 66% in this first three minutes, up by 4. Ball up top, Luchansky swings it around to Hightower. Brown on him beyond the arc, and there's going to be an offensive foul off the ball going the other way. Brandon Wise, I believe, is going to pick that one up. He does. 
also just checked into the game, Hassan Darby, the junior forward from Philadelphia. Brown guarded by Hightower. Rappaport comes up beyond the arc. That was going to be tipped out of bounds. Last off, Darby. It'll remain Lions ball, 21 on the shot clock, 17-11 in the first half. Luchansky guarding the inbound. Dancy gets it up top. The big switch, Harris baseline jumper. Can't find the bucket. It'll be an air ball, rebounded by Hightower, his first. Brown on him. Luchansky coming up to get the ball. Deep three, buried. Matt Seep from long range, the senior forward, showing some length. Dancy to Majeka Dume, guarded by Luchansky. Coming off the screen on the far side, Sidney Brown gets his own rebound. Back to Harris, the Lions have a fresh 30 on the shot clock. Majeka Dume, a nose for the rim, slicing and dicing, gets the deuce. Just over 16 minutes remaining in the first, and the Lions up three. Hightower looking to roll off the screen. It's Seep. Thought about another long one. He sets the screen now for Hightower. Rappaport came over for help. Harris then had to protect the weak side, and there will be a foul called. At the line, Hassan Darby. These are his first free throw attempts of the season. He converts on the second, making it a two-point game. It's Dancy crossing midcourt, subs into the game. Brandon Wise guarding him. Latrell Carroll trying to keep up with Rappaport on the low block. Harris comes over, cutting hard, kicks it out. Rappaport for three. The big man can't get it to drop. Isaiah Harris with another offensive board. The Lions look to reset. Rappaport sets the high screen. Dancy, no good on the three. Harris again battling. That one was going to be last off him. It was tipped around by Seep as well. The Lions with six rebounds now. Of those six, three on the offensive glass. Penn State Burks just two total. So the Lions completely dominating on the glass. Dancy gets a tip. Hightower comes up with a loose ball, and Harris just wrong place, wrong time, runs over the little fella. He picks up his second in under a minute. Robbie McHugh into the game. He gets the ball in the corner. Guarded by Majeka Dume. Caught on the switch. Troy Smoot into the game for Albright as well. Wise kicked it out. Ball into the corner. Luchansky looking for some open space. Nice cut, and the bucket's in. Give that assist to Luchansky, leading his teammate, Brandon Wise, down the lane with that nice bounce pass in traffic. Game tied at six. Majeka Dume, the crossover down low, Rappaport, the reverse. Give it to me off the glass. Sidney Brown in the mix, couldn't get the block, but he changed the trajectory of the shot. Transition three, no good. He's over for 2 now from long range. Still looking for his first points.
Luchansky now with the ball in the corner, 13 on the shot clock, gives it to Hightower. Rappaport took a little contact, actually looking for the offensive foul. He'll take the block. Majekadume wisely pulls it out. Three ball, no good. It was long. The Lions in their first game shot 11.8% from beyond the arc. Could contribute it to first game jitters, but they haven't been able to hit the three in this game either. Still early in the season, trying to find their shot, find their rhythm. Rappaport goes up to contest that one. Lions have a fast break. Smoot off the glass for the easy deuce. Lions first one in double digits with the 10-6 lead. Seven minutes have elapsed here in the first. Luchansky with the ball now across midcourt. Dancy bodying him up. The step back three. High rebound. I think it hit the top wire. It did. That's a dead ball. Checking into the game for the Lions, number 23, Christian Lane, the sophomore guard from Alden, Pennsylvania, went to Bonner Prendergast. As the Lions faithful continue to stroll in after class on this brisk Wednesday night. Rappaport to Majeka Dume, spot up three, don't tease me, just please me. Lions up 13 to six. Majeka Dume, as I said, coming off a career high in game one. He will be one of the players that Coach Rick Ferry will be relying heavily on this season. Not only on the offensive end, but lockdown defense of the other team's best guards as well. And a steal for the Lions. They look to fast break. No foul. Guard bodies hitting the bleachers. They're going to give him the clean block for Hightower. Wow. Troy Smoot had a full head of steam. And that one was blocked. A couple players checking in for the Nittany Lions, Monty Farmer, as well as number 13, Renee Alexandre. Rappaport down low, contact, and they're going to call it on him. He was going for the ball midair as he was turning. Just a little collision. It's a tough call. Could have gone either way. Rappaport will pick up his first, team's third. Stolen by Dancy is a one on three the other way. Goes strong off the glass. Can't get it to fall. A couple bodies hit the deck. A whistle blown on the floor. Hightower over into the corner. A lot of switching on the Lions defensive end. 15 on the shot clock. Sipo hit that long three earlier in the first. Gets the ball down low. The turnaround jumper no good. Rebounded by Troy Smoot pushing the pace. Across midcourt. Smoot guarded by Kenny Riggs. That three is no good. Rebounded by Monty Farmer. His first of the game. The three is no good. Majeka Dume with the board. That's his third rebound of this game. Majeka Dume with the three and a man in his face. 
puts the Lions up 15 to 6. The Bodo Beauties love that one. The Lions looking to lock down D in this final 10 minutes of the half. Hightower guarded by Lane. He kicks it out. The Lions doing a good job communicating on the defensive end with the switches. Good help defense. Loose ball. Who comes up with it? It is the Nittany Lions with an easy deuce. Monty Farmer getting the easiest bucket of the game. Timeout called on the floor. 10-13 remaining. Lions up 15-8. We're going to take a quick break here with the full timeout. Stick with us here on AlbrightAthletics.com. We're about to be back from the timeout. Let's take a quick look at the numbers. The Lions leading the rebounding battle, plus two, ten to eight. Three of those ten on the offensive glass. Tack on five assists to the Nittany Lions, just one. So the Lions moving the ball well on the offensive end, giving them this 15 to eight lead. In the game now is Jason Clark running the point. Majeka Dume taking his first breather of the game. Troy Smoot. Six points off the bench last week. Buries that three from long range. Lions up by 10. Hightower running the offense. Lions coming over for the double. Down low. Smoot with the acrobatic steal and save from going out of bounds. A little uncontrollable. And they are calling a foul, we'll see who it's on. I think it's gonna stay down here. 23 in blue, Monty Farmer. Team's fourth. I thought Lane was a little out of control going down the lane. I wouldn't have complained if it was an offensive foul. It looked it from this angle, but the referee down low thought otherwise, which is good for us, so I can't complain. Luchansky back into the game for Hightower. Sidney Brown on the baseline. Looks to drive up and over the defender. Offensive rebound by the Lions. Kicked out. Smoot wants the three. No good. Renee Alexander across midcourt. He's out on the wing, gets it to Lachansky at the top of the arc. Nine minutes remaining in the first half. Wide open three, no good. Rebounded by the Nittany Lions, a fresh 30 on the clock. They go straight up with it and get the deuce from Latrell Carroll. The freshman, he's 6'5", 220, that's a big boy down on the low block. He's been battling as well all night. The no-look pass and the extra. Smoot, spot up three, tickles the twine and gets that one to fall, 21-10. Kept his pivot foot, Coach Ferry wanted the travel. Ref didn't call it and the Lions get the easy two off the offensive rebound. (laughs) 
Rick Ferry for the Lions, Rich Miller for the Nittany Lions. Both up and animated coaches. Ferry urging his defense on. Knights closed out defensive speed by Kyle Sheeb. That three is no good. Sidney Brown rips down the board. Spin move in the lane, up and in. Kyle Sheeb put 25 cents in the washing machine and gets the deuce. That'll be a foul. I'm getting Sixers updates as well tonight. Jimmy Butler starting for the Sixers, his first game. He has four points early on, and Bede has 11. I'll keep you posted at halftime. We'll touch base on that one. Smoot slowing it up across midcourt. Jason Clark with the ball looking to make something happen. Kicks it out into the corner. The three looks long the whole time it was by Blake Thompson, the freshman guard seeing his first action of this game. Did not hit rim on that shot. The Lions had to continue playing defense for about nine more seconds, but the foul is called, sending Hassan Darby to the line. He's one for two from the line tonight. Make that one for three. Long three from the corner, no good from Kyle Sheeb. Back the other way, and we're trading missed threes. The Lions have some numbers if they look to push. Stop, pop, no good on the drop. Luchansky comes up with the board for the Nittany Lions. He's got momentum, puts up the floater, no good. Looking to slow it down, Sidney Brown, and a timeout called by Coach Rick Ferry and the Lions, 6-0-1 on the clock. Lions up 23-12 over the Nittany Lions. We'll take a quick break. Stick with us here on AlbrightAthletics.com. A quick little update in the first quarter of the Sixers Magic game. Sixers lead 23-21. Jimmy Butler, three for three from the field with eight points early on. And beat four for five. Tack on 11 for him. And we are back in action here at the George C. Bowman. If you're just tuning in with us, you're a little late. Lions up 23-12. to Looking to add to it with Rappaport down low. Nice pass to Clark, who got some contact. He's headed to the line, shooting two. 
Jason Clark, his first free throw attempts of the season. The Lions shooting 64% from the charity stripe as a team this year. Clark clanks his first one. Try and say that one five times fast. Clark clanks. Sidney Brown into the game. Dion Booker taking a breather. Ten on the shot clock for the Nittany Lions. And they put up a running floater. Ball on the floor. Bodies hit the deck and we have a foul called. It should be on number 13, Renee Alexandre, the junior guard from Kissimmee, Florida. Rolling off the screen is Blake Thompson. Looked for some open space, couldn't find any. Ball tipped out, rebounded by Jason Clark. A fresh 30 on the shot clock. Sidney Brown. Thought would be on the inbound. It's going to be Kyle Sheeb. Brown, Thompson, Rappaport, Clark. And she make up the five on the floor for the Lions. Rappaport can't convert the bucket. Defender in his face. Lions up just by 11, four and a half remaining. High arcing three up and in by Robbie McHugh, the sophomore forward. Those are his first points of the game, actually, as well. Thompson driving, gets the scoop with some sprinkles on top. A little extra flair. Lions back up by 10. A couple subs about to check into the game for the, the Albright Lions. Excuse me, Delacio Dancy and Samuel Majeka Dume, it looks like. High three again, long rebound. Sidney Brown pulls that one in. She looks to kick it out. It was tipped around. And the Nittany Lions with an easy bucket, and they missed. The Lions have numbers if they push. It's a four on three. Brown to Clark to wrap up the alley-oop, and they're going to call the blocking foul. Bodies hit the floor. They're going to give that one to Hassan Darby. Jason Clark at the line. That one rattles home. That one goes in as well. The Lions with 19 rebounds already with three and a half remaining in the first. So far this season, they're averaging 34 boards a game. Controlling the glass. You got a couple of your big guys back in. Rappaport got a nice break. He'll play until the halftime. 
and Majekadume looking to lock in down low. Thompson, closeout speed, got a hand in the face, and Delacio Dancy rips down the board. Most of the starters are back on the floor for Albright. Thompson, acrobatic, gets it to fall. Now he's playing defense on Luchansky. A hard screen set beyond the arc. Rappaport can't get the block. The deuce by Rene Alexander. 29-17. Dancy from the wing to the low block. Rappaport kicks it out. Majekadume on the drive. Strong to the pin. Can't get it to fall. It'll be Luchansky running point. Dancy on him. Looking for the screen. He can't find it. Delacio Dancy sticking to him like glue. Seep thought about another long three. Ripped away by Sidney Brown. Can he win the foot race? No, but Majeka Dume blocked as well. And a silly foul 85 feet away from the bucket by Dancy. You hate to see those. Sometimes you just have to slow down the pace, though. Lions up 12 with two minutes to go. Fast break points are how you pull away from a team like the Nittany Lions. And Albright, 0 for 2 that possession. Dancy picks up his first, team sixth. And we're going to call an offensive foul. Going back the other way. I don't know who this one's on. Latrell Carroll. They're going to say a moving screen. Possessions are limited in this first half. 29-17. We're under two minutes to go. Thompson to Dancy on the elbow. Looking for a cutting Sidney Brown. Finds him beyond the arc. Macheka Dume thought about stepping into a three. 15 on the shot clock. Sidney Brown no good. He's 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. And after that miss, Troy Smoot checking into the game. He has 8 points, 2 for 6 from long range. Dancy comes up with a steal, and the Lions have plenty of numbers. Majeka Dume, the lefty layup off the glass for two. Good steal and assist by Delacio Dancy. Had a couple Albright Lions breaking. One minute to play. Seep with the ball. Smoot on him. Thompson coming over after the switch. Down low on Seep. Rappaport. Keeping his feet firm. Can't come up with a steal, and that's going to be a bucket for Latrell Carroll. He has just four points in this first half. Jared Rappaport with the easy deuce, the dish from Majeka Dume. Hightower kicked it out into the corner. That three was good by... Rene Alexandre. 15 on the clock. This will be the final possession for the Lions. They will not call a timeout. Eight now on the clock. Dancy with the ball. Majeka Dume coming over for the screen. Dancy looking to drive. The floater off the glass gets it to fall as the buzzer sounds. The Lions with momentum into the locker room. Delacio Dancy. Probably the most experienced guy on the team. Gets that one to fall. Lines up 35-22. Headed into the locker room. We're going to take a quick break here. Make sure you come back for the second half on AlbrightAthletics.com.
And we are back here in the second half. If you're just joining us, thank you very much for tuning in to AlbrightAthletics.com. I'm your man, Dave Molinaro, and the Albright Lions hold a 35-22 lead over Penn State Burke's Nittany Lions. Let's take a look at some numbers real quick as this second half is getting started. Albright, 15 for 36, shooting 41.7% from the field, just 3 for 16 from long range, 18%. They have to keep crashing the boards, slashing, driving the lane. That's where they're getting their bread buttered, at least in the first half. And as I said previously, they only shot about 11.5% from beyond the arc the first game. So early in the season, still getting that long-distance shot under their belt. But in the meantime, you got to keep going with what works. Five seconds on the shot clock. Hightower's going to have to put it up. One second. Are they going to call the shot clock violation? No. So the Nittany Lions, I don't know if you can see the above backboard. You see there's one second remaining. So this is a catch and shoot situation for the Nittany Lions. And he didn't even know. That's something your teammates have to be telling you before the ball is inbounded. That's something your coach has to be telling you. All the Nittany Lions coaches firmly on the bench. The players should know that situation, but it's a team game. you got to be reminded of that one. The Lions cause a turnover in the first possession on the defensive end in the second half. Continuing that momentum off the Delacio Dancy buzzer beater with that floater. And he called glass. I heard him from up here. Speaking of Dancy, rolling off the Rappaport pick, took some body contact, and there's a foul on the floor. Off the turnover, it's going to be Hightower bringing the ball up. Sidney Brown committing the foul. Also, by the way, I was informed at halftime, we had a jersey switch, and I was using the wrong name, but we can't put that blame on me. I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get that before the game. Number 10 is being worn by Mark Brinkley. Kyle Sheeb is not playing tonight, and there's something with a roster jersey number switch. I got the whole runaround, but... Number 10 tonight is Mark Brinkley. He's the one who has a couple points. So apologies to anyone who caught that error before I was informed. Rappaport beyond the arc to Dancy. Isaiah Harris wanting the ball down low, calling for it. Macheka Dume, the slice, the dice, off the glass. Can't get it to fall. They're going to call the foul on the floor. The end one bucket, Jared Rappaport headed to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Rappaport looking to convert the three-point play, nothing but nylon from the big man. Brown guarding Hightower. Coming up to set the screen is Latrell Carroll. Swung around into the corner. The turnaround jumper up and in by Matt Seep. He has five points now. Harris just bodying his defender. Can't convert the layup. Lines up 14. Luchansky. Found Hightower. And the ref blew the whistle. I'm not sure what for. They had to reset the shot clock to 23 seconds. I don't think it ever reshot with the change of possession. 
after the missed shot on the far side. Rappaport hand straight up. The bucket still goes in. Latrell Carroll now has six, leading all Nittany Lion scorers. Majeka Dume hit the wood, got it out to Dancy, 15 on the shot clock. Rappaport sets the screen. Dancy, stop, pop, good on the drop, gets the deuce. Dancy now with four points. The Lions are led by Jared Rappaport with 11, followed by Samuel Majeka Dume with nine, and Troy Smoot with eight. High tower, yeah, he was either pushing off or the travel. Either way, it's Lions ball after the turnover. Majekadume, the finger roll pass, Rappaport from the baseline. Gets the deuce. Lions up 42-36. Sydney Brown gets the steal and the foul, and we're headed the other way. Rappaport went up for the block, comes down with the rebound. Lines the other way, do not have numbers. Majeka Dume with the hesitation, spin move, up in, gets the crowd off their feet with the finger roll deuce. And back on defense as well, hustling. The Lions doing a good job on the defensive end, not getting complacent after a nice basket. Majeka Dume up top. Guarding Hightower. Sidney Brown now as well. Luchansky for three. Looked off it was. They're going to say it was last off Majeka Dume. The crowd thinks it was off Brandon Wise. Dancy comes up with the steal. There was some body contact. It'll be Latrell Carroll, I think, picks up another. That's Carroll's third foul, team's fifth. Checking into the game, Steph Williams, the junior guard. He got a rousing applause from the Penn State Burks faithful. The crowd getting into it in the second half. Majeka Dume in the corner, no good. Thompson, excuse me, Harris, flying in for the rebound. He'll be charged with that foul. The full court press by the line, seeing if they can get a steal. They did, Dancy, oh, gonna be called for the foul. And Coach Rick Farias to calm the Lions bench as all the referees are in their corner here. You don't want anything cheap from a couple of the guys off the court. <laughs> He's laughing with some of the guys now. 44-26. Seep with the ball down low. Carroll. Looking for the turnaround, Jay, no good. Rappaport and Harris combine to get that loose ball. Dancy now with a full head of steam. Kicks it out, Majeka Dume to Brown in the corner, no good. Offensive rebound, up, strong, hit the eight room. Get 
gets the deuce with two men hanging all over him. Isaiah Harris headed to the line for the old fashioned three point play. Albright feeding off the crowd. You felt it during that Sydney Brown three. They really wanted it. Then the offensive board and hustle from Isaiah Harris getting the end one bucket. Can't convert the three pointer. Rappaport got the rebound and got fouled on the shot. Give him two more free throws. And his Lions crowd starting to get loud in the George C. Bowman Center. Albright up 20. Make it 21. <clears throat> Steph Williams garnering a large applause from the crowd and there's a foul Sydney Brown looking for that steal Penn State Burks fans sitting behind their bench getting into this. There's a errant whistle on the court. Now coach Rick Ferry getting an explanation. I wish I was a little fly on the wall to hear that conversation. Lions up 22, 48-26, 14-42 remaining on the clock. Penn State Burks already with seven fouls. Sidney Brown just picked up his second, and we have an offensive foul going the other way. That will be on Robbie McHugh. No, they're switching it now to Steph Williams, his first team's eighth. And a technical foul was called. Coach Rich Miller for the Nittany Lions called for the technical foul. The referees gave him enough rope, and he hung himself. Talking just a little bit too much. Sidney Brown at the line converts it. Perfect from the line that trip. And it's the Lions ball with Rappaport and Brown on the inbound. Brown on the drive, Rappaport. Broken ankles and the Albright crowd is going bananas. There's a traveling violation called. <laughs> Sydney Brown just out here embarrassing folks. I mean, listen to this crowd. They loved it. <laughs> Brown playing tight D on Williams. Seep with the ball, Majekadume has him. Cross court pass, 15 on the shot clock. And there's gonna be another foul called. Christian Lane will pick up this one. You hear the slow build up from the crowd as the shot clock starts to wind down. <laughs> I mean, you would think this is a five point game. They're up by more than 20, but I love the enthusiasm. Rappaport checking out. Now into the game, Troy Smoot, the sophomore guard. Smoot has eight points coming in off the bench. Three of seven shooting. Hightower looking to drive. Puts up the floater and gets it to fall.
Majek and Dume slicing, dicing, don't tease me. Just please me with the finger air off the glass for two. Ball into the corner. Penn State Burks looking for some offense, and they find it from Renee Alexander. And we have a timeout. I think we all collectively need a break. The crowd, both teams, myself, we're going to take a 30-second timeout. Stick with us here at AuburnAthletics.com. Majeka Dume, Harris, Smoot, Brown, and Lane on the floor for the Albright Lions after the timeout. Sydney Brown thought about a three, drives the lefty floater, can't get it to fall. Rebounded, headed the other way by the Nittany Lions. And again, they didn't reset the shot clock with the possession change. You see really quickly, it's down to 10 already. It should probably be at like 26. 20, they put it at. Helps out the Albright lines a little. 25 now they switch it to. Ball in the corner. Majeka Dume playing some nice baseline D. Robbie McHugh looks to dish it away, and there's a foul on the floor on Isaiah Harris. That'll be his fourth, team sixth, and that'll bring on Mark Brinkley Jr. into the game. Full court pass, Smoot all over Matt Seep. 15 on the shot clock. Brown and Hightower. Now McHugh picks up his dribble in a tough spot. Five on the shot clock. An unconventional looking shot to say the least. And again with the shot clock. Ugh. They did not reset it off the switch. They will put 27 back on the shot clock. Majeka Dume into Jason Clark, who just checked in during that little whistle break. Smoot off the screen. He is McHugh after the switch. Majeka Dume eyeing up his prey. Ball, corner, pocket, no good. The Lions are 0 for 6 from threes in the corner. And oh goodness, Dion Booker with the grown man block. Can't go down low on him, not tonight. Twenty on the shot clock for the Nittany Lions. Brinkley doing a good job on the inbound defense on that baseline. If you see him right there, number 10, clogging up the lane right under the rim. And a timeout is called. The Lions inbound defense working again. Coach Rick Ferry loving it on the side. 52-30, 12-26 remaining in this game. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on AlbrightAthletics.com.
<clears throat> and we are back here after the 30 second timeout break. The Lions again with good defense. It's a loose ball and it's a two on nobody. And the Lions get the deuce. Christian Lane, the sophomore guard, comes up with a steal, goes coast to coast. And those are his first two points of the game. McHugh swings it around to Hightower on the wing. That two no good ball tipped around. Who comes up with it? Nittany Lions thought about a three with a cross court pass. Hightower, no good. Troy Smoot rips down that board. Booker out to Smoot. Clarkson now on the drive. The righty floater gets it to fall. Lions up 56-30 with 11-15 remaining in this game. McHugh. To Seep, who gets the three. The senior forward, Matt Seep, now with eight points on three of eight shooting. That'll be a turnover on the Albright Lions, checking into the game for the Nittany Lions, Latrell Carroll. He's just three for seven from the field, six points total in 17 minutes of play. Latrell Carroll picks up his fifth, and he's headed to the bench. Team's 10th. Alex Odell, the sophomore forward, checking into the game for the first time tonight. Smoot, the yellow step, can't get the layup to fall. Clark on the switch on the far side. Hand in the face, and that's a rebound for number 11, Dion Booker, the sophomore forward. Booker to Clark, can't get the bucket. There was some contact, he'll head to the line shooting two. Clark is two for four from the free throw stripe tonight. Smoot and Booker on the low blocks looking for this rebound. Hightower with a head of steam across midcourt, slowed up by number 23 in white, Christian Lane. Jason Clark now off the steal, going the other way, loses control, dishes it out. Smoot thought about a corner three, pump faking his way to the top of the arc. Brinkley, baseline, no. Bodies on the floor, it's a loose ball. And timeout is called. Great hustle by the Lions. Troy Smoot hitting the deck 
It'll be their ball, 932 remaining in this game. Stick with us here on AlbrightAthletics.com. And we are back live here in the George C. Bowman Center. The Lions dominating. Give him another three. Troy Smoot tickles the twine from beyond the arc. 59-33. Jason Clark got a hand on the rebound, but the bucket is up and in by Alex Odell. A sub or two about to check in for Albright. Throws on the line. It's a long two if it went in. It wasn't. And Matt Seep rips down that board. That bucket no good. Rebounded by Penn State. Who gets the deuce? Penn State Burst actually now leading this rebounding battle 34 to 28. And of those 34, 11 on the offensive side of things. That second chance opportunity points that Albright's going to want to clean up. And they get the tic tac toe passing on the other end. Dion Booker with a two hand jam. Oh, they'll call it kick ball on Albright. Blake. Thompson checking into the game. The freshman guard, six foot, 175 from Lebanon Valley. And with these final eight minutes and change, we'll see if Coach Rick Ferry gets a few different faces in the game, get them some opportunity to play. Mark Brinkley Jr., Almost came up with the steal. Was tipped out of bounds. That three is no good. Rebounded by Booker. Gets it to Smoot, who takes his time crossing midcourt. Smoot calling out the play. Brinkley, Clarkson, Troy Smoot, spot up three. Bang, bang, bang. You can count them all. Lions pulling it on here in the second half. They're up 64 37. Eli Worley, the freshman guard, into the game for the Nittany Lions. And the acrobatic layup falls for Renee Alexandre.
Brinkley on the drive. Stop, pop, no good on the drop. Rebounded by Seep. Odell. Passing it around 15 on the shot clock. Thompson playing good D, looking for the steal. Five on the shot clock. It will be McHugh driving. And they're going to call a foul. <laughs> Jason Clark. will be subbing out. Matt Yedsina checking into the game, as well as number 34, Isaac Burn Burris, excuse me. Now Yedsina, the junior guard, I was watching him during pregame warmups. He's throwing alley oops like off the backboard to himself. The kid could throw down. So if the Lions get a steal and transition, he might bring the house down. Thompson pump fake and drive, and there's a foul. Yeah, keep an eye out. I'm going to call that right now. The 6.01 remaining on the clock. Matt Yedsina, number one. Blake Thompson makes his first free throw attempt of the season. Perfect from the line, two for two. Lions back up by 26. Since Rappaport's bucket about a minute and a half into this game, the Lions have not foregone the lead since. Penn State Burks came in here, and it'll be a wire-to-wire -wire loss by them as Albright continues to close out this game. Odell makes the free throw. <laughs> Lines get the rebound. A couple of them actually collided midair. It was Yedstina and Burris. Thompson now swinging it around the arc. This is where you take your time, use a lot of the shot clock, just bleed this game out. Take the air out of the ball. Five on the shot clock. That three at the buzzer, no good. Rebounded and a foul will send Isaac Burris, the sophomore center, to the line. Alex Odell picks up his second. Nittany Lions over 10 fouls.
And a couple subs checking into the game. Number four, Aiden Newell. After a couple of missed free throws, we are under five minutes left in this game. Lions looking to close out the Nittany Lions, currently up 66-41. Seep with a step back three, buries that with Burris in his face. Running the point, Blake Thompson, the freshman guard, as I said, from Lebanon Valley, Pennsylvania. That three banks in, I don't know if he planned it, Aiden Newell, and the bench loves it. Coach McFarry looking at him, did he call bank? I don't know on that one. Wow, lines up 69-44. <laughs> that just gives him the confidence to know he'll be firing the rest of this game. Here's another one. Contested three, oh, no good. And that was tipped out last off the Nittany Lions. It's going to stay Albright ball. Good. When you get in games like this, shoot. Why not? Who knows when you're going to get your next chance. Fire away. On a play like that in transition, he went for the wraparound steal. I just don't understand how the two closest referees that were feet away from the action swallow the whistle, and the referee on this far side right in front of us is the one calling it. It's just, I don't know. First free throw up and in. Folks, we have a long season ahead, but God, I love when it's basketball season. Let's take a quick look down the line. Next game is in two nights against Randolph Mackin, which is in the Gettysburg tip-off tournament. They have a couple games versus Gettysburg, Eastern and Lycoming coming up, and then December hosting Lebanon Valley. And Lycoming and Lebanon Valley weekend is what will start Mac Commonwealth play. After that, on the road at Widener and Stevenson, back home versus Messiah, at Wilkes, and then it's Christmas. So once 2019 hits, it'll be hard and fast. There's games hosting Arcadia and Alvernia. You got tough ones on the road at Lebanon Valley and Arcadia again. And that's basketball season, folks, so you have to love it. And we will be here for every home game on albrightathletics.com. Checking into the game now, the freshman number 24, Jay Baxter. He's a six-foot-one guard from Gavesburg, Maryland. And Baxter will be running point. Yedzina gets it to fall. Matt Yedzina, the junior guard. As I said, pregame, he was throwing down some dunks. I would love to see him in the open court. The long two is short. Burris can't come up with the rebound. It's Odo going up. Was it tipped around? Maybe blocked. Yedzina running the floor and is fouled, headed to the line, shooting two. Yet Senna can't make the first.
That one is in as well. Coach Rick Ferry, a masterful coaching performance tonight. Also able to get in 17 players. That's how you start to build a program. Wins like this, you pull away from teams you should, get some of the younger guys minutes, and then like last year when we lose a couple big seniors, who steps up? You know, the young guy, Majeka Dume, who saw time last year. You know, you have your Rappaport to lean on. But then there's also guys like Sidney Brown, Isaiah Harris, a couple of sophomores that saw minutes last year like the younger guys are doing in a game like this. Rick Ferry's just done an awesome job with this program, and the expectations are high. I said pregame, they were voted in the preseason poll to finish second. Last year, you remember a heartbreaking loss in the championship. They still got a bid to the big dance, went to Cabrini. I believe they played like Long Island, Brooklyn, or a school like that. And yet, Cena throws it down, like I said, during pregame. With the one hand jam flying through the air. Another loose ball. Bodies hit the floor. Lions come up with a steal. Dallas now. Can he throw it? Down and two handed slam. The crowd going wild. The bench loves it, hurting each other back. Sidney Brown fainting when he saw it. This is some fun basketball. The, the Lions. Third shift night crowd coming in, getting the job done. <laughs> Dallas with the rim ladder. And I think he landed in the third row of the crowd. 76 47 after all is said and done. A couple of free throws on the other end. Still battling hard for that rebound. Under two minutes to go. Yet yeah, Cena gets the contested deuce. Yet Cena now has seven points on three of three shooting. Perfect coming in off the bench. Yet Cena picks up his third. Farmer at the line. Can't convert the first. Nice pass, touch, Barris was blocked. Aiden Newell with the touch pass on the baseline. Rebounded by Jay Baxter who's slowing down the pace, just two possessions remaining. That three's no good. Shot clock turned off. And it looks like the Nittany Lions will just dribble this one out. They might try and run one final play. Stolen away. Oh no. Gets the goose. I thought he was gonna go for the slam. Defender came out of nowhere. Matt Yensena. Gets two more points, give him nine. Perfect from the field tonight. And the Lions get the 80 to 49 win. The Albright Lions improve to one and one with a dominating win at home, a couple leading scorers.
Jared Rappaport with 15, Troy Smoot with 14, Samuel Majekadume with 13. When three of your top guys are in double digits, you know it's going to be a good night. Again, as I said, a couple road games coming up, tournaments and all that. We will be back here live in the George C. Bowman Center on December 1st at 3 p.m. hosting Lebanon Valley. We want to thank you guys very much for tuning in to AlbrightAthletics.com. I'm your man, Dave Mono. We'll be back next time. Go Lions!